Right guys, I want to start today's video by taking you right back to the end of the 1990s, a time when Porsche, believe it or not, were about to go out of extinction. Yes, it was for the second time in their history and blah, 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 we've seen it all before, but this was really true. People were being laid off right, left and centre, sales of the 911 were ailing, the car was no longer considered frugal and its air-cooled engines were no longer environmentally friendly. Porsche had to do something and the result was that. The Porsche 996. Now this car is special because it's a 1998 model year car which means it's from the first year of water-cooled 911 production. Now a 98 car is identifiable thanks to its amber lenses all round. From model year 99 they switched to clear lenses. Now an amber lens car is cool because not only is it a minor aesthetical change which sets it apart from the rest of the Gen 1 996s, it also signifies that the car is a cable throttle car because from the 99 model year they moved to E-Gas. These cars don't have PSM either. Porsche stability management was introduced from 2000 onwards across the 911 range. So what does all of that mean? Well, despite all the changes over the air-cooled cars that preceded it, the first year of the 996 Gen 1 generation cars possibly represents the last of the truly pure 911. It's the last model year before all of the nannying technology started creeping its way into the beloved Neun Alpha. This is the last proper 911. Now this particular car is owned by my buddy Alex. Alex runs Apsley Cars which is a sports car dealership and sports car sourcing service. Now that means this car is for sale but it's actually been Alex's own personal car for the entirety of the summer. He got the car, enjoyed it so much, decided to hang on to it for a bit. So, mass respects, he knows his cars. Now, it's fair to say the 996 isn't exactly lavish with the finest materials inside. However, what the 996 lacks in terms of its fine materials used, it more than makes up for in terms of its ergonomics. For the first time in the history of the 911, its interior actually makes sense. The iconic five dials the 911 has always had are now sitting within the circumference of the steering wheel, the heated controls are simple to use, whereas before they were cryptic. The car even came with an optional PCM screen, so you could have sat-nav in the 911 for the first time. I even like the way the door cards look, to be honest. I just think it's, it's, it looks beautiful, even if the materials in which it was made with aren't the best. Now, one of the main gripes that people have always had about the 996, apart from the engine, which we'll come to in a bit, are those fried egg headlights up front. Now 911 owner's main point of contention with those lights is they just look identical to the Boxsters. It almost undermined the 911 as the car that sat at the top of the pyramid for Porsche. However, when you're sitting in this seat, you can't see those lights. So it's not an issue, right? Now, onto the elephant in the room. Porsche's good old flat six, which for the 996 generation turned to water cooling. In terms of capacity, the engine was reduced in size from 3.6 litres in the 993 to 3.4 litres under this new M96 version of the flat six engine. And to be honest with you, it's actually a corker to drive. I much prefer the 3.4 litre engine over the later 3.6 litre flat six that went in the Gen 2 996. Now the reason for that is simple, the car just has a much more rewarding top end. It's really, really rewarding to wind that needle all the way around the taco to the red line, whereas in the 3.6 you don't need to do that. There's so much more torque lower down the rev range that driving the car fast is quite easy. This is a very top end heavy engine, which is a classic 911 to be fair. This car is such a hoot to drive, and I tell you something, for between 12 and 18 grand, incredible value for money in fact for 15 grand you go and find me a better value sports car than the 996 911 you won't be able to do it now the 996 story didn't end there because as of 2002 the generation 2 car came along now there are a few subtle but significant changes for the Gen 2 car over the Gen 1. Those being an increase in engine capacity from 3.4 to 3.6 litres and also a revision of the front end of the car which now sported the meaner looking turbo headlights if you like. There are also some minor updates uh, particularly in the interior for example the 
Gen 2 car's got a glove box, the engine and deck clip poppers were revised, they just look a little bit nicer I think, and there was a greater degree of trim options available too. Now there were some further evolutions to the 996 generation as well, and that included the production of the C4S, such as this car. Now, the 996 Carrera 4S followed in the footsteps of the 993 C4S, which was essentially a very well-spec Carrera rolling on a turbo chassis. Turbo chassis means wider wheels, a wider track, bigger brakes, and all importantly, a wide body shell. Now, the difference between the two shells is only a matter of millimetres, but there's no denying the rear of the 996 C4S looks so much wider than the narrow body car. Now this car drives a lot differently to the car in front as well and I think the main difference really is when you're turning into a corner you can really feel that wider track. The whole car just feels a little bit more stable. Again, as I mentioned, the engine's a lot torquier low down compared to the 3.4 litre car so you feel like you get moving a lot quicker in this car. And although the four wheel drive system is brilliant, there's no denying you can really begin to feel the understeer on this car a lot earlier than the rear drive car. He's gone and I'm caught out. The other thing is you can really feel the weight in this car as well. That narrow body car is so much quicker to get going. This only has an extra 20 horsepower over the narrow body car. Gen 1 cars have 300 horsepower, Gen 2 cars have 320. But this car is so much heavier, it's over 100 kilos heavier than that narrow body car. You really feel it under acceleration, it just lags behind. Sounds great though, doesn't it? Now we're cooking on gas. Now this is my own 911, so there's a hint of bias in how good the 996 generation is. However, Alex behind me, who, although that car is his own, he is a car dealer, so he's seen many 911s in his time. Before we left to get filming on the road, we had a cup of tea at his and just got chatting generally about the 996 generation, so here's what he thinks of the car in any case. What do you like generally about the 996 generation of 911 then? It's so usable, I think, for me. Like if I was to wake up and I think, well, what car should I take for a long drive to say, I don't know, Cambridge from here, which is like sort of two and a half, three hours, I'd jump in it and I'd go. And you've driven my car as well, obviously. Yeah. What yeah. do you think are the main differences between the two? Yeah, that was interesting driving yours. I really enjoyed it, so thanks for that, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> de yeah. It definitely feels a lot bigger on the road. So I think if you're, if you're hacking through country lanes and stuff, I think you've really got to be mindful about actually how wide it is because it may only be a few mil, I'm sure you know the exact differences, but yeah, it feels big on the road, it feels more planted on the road. That's about it really, they're the biggest things that I'd say, yeah. Mm. And then going back to that, just one last thing, and the interior in yours feels a lot more refined, you know, sort of more well-crafted, I'd say. Mm. Well, I don't know about you, but my cup of tea's gone cold. Yeah. So, should we go and do some driving? Yeah, let's do it, yeah. Okay. Now, the point of my video is this. The two cars we've got here today represent the first and last of the 996 generation Carreras. It was 20 years ago this week that the 996 generation was first revealed at the Frankfurt Motor Show. And 20 years on, I really feel like the 996 has come of age. So I want to finish this video by saying happy birthday to the 996. Thanks to Alex for letting me drive his awesome car. We will see you again soon. Fucking hell, easy on, son. Christ. Fucking hell, I want something left by the time you give it back. Jesus.